So I've received some questions about my custom design boxes and I want to show you how I made them. Now my disclaimer is I am not a carpenter so I know I'll probably use some terms incorrectly during this video so um, all you carpenters out there give me a break <laughs> I'm trying here okay so we are going to first I went ahead and started my lettuce starts in my rock wool like I showed you in the video the original video and now I took my shelf that I already had and I want to get my measurements so I can determine the size of the box that I need I need my box to fit on the shelf but I'll need to pull it out occasionally so I want to make sure that it is not the complete width of the shelf in other words I'm measuring inside of the poles here okay so I determined my width would be 30 inches and my depth 16 inches so I recall in the square foot gardening book the construction of the boxes there were very good instructions in there so I pulled it out and I wanted to show you how we're going to put it together so we're going to kind of interlock each corner and you can kind of see how it fits together like a little puzzle here okay so that's how I'm going to design my box so back to the drawing board we're going to go ahead and determine and draw out the design first I know that the lumber I'm going to use is two inches deep okay. so if I'm interlocking it uh, that'll be two inches plus I need to get 30 inches out of here so one length will be 28 inches and then of course I'm interlocking for lack of a better term interlocking the um, lumber so on the other side I need 16 inches so again I have the two inches which is the depth of the lumber here and then I need a total of 16 inches so I'll need a length of 14 inches for the other piece okay so I suggest you determine what kind of lumber you're going to use and go ahead and check your home improvement stores specifications for that lumber and make sure that it's true to what you're buying okay sometimes they are and sometimes they're not for instance here is a one by six but if you look closer at the actual um, depth and width it is a little bit shorter but they're not all that way and that's because that one by six is the pre-milled dimension okay but the length will be the same so I didn't know that so my in, my design ended up about one or two inches um, shorter than I preferred but uh, you know you want to try to maximize the space when you're going vertically so it was not, wasn't a big deal but I would have liked it to fit a little bit more snug in the shelf so I also had some items around the house that I could reuse I'm going to use deck screws and finishing nails I did buy a new sanding block and I also purchased I think it's called utility board it's a real thin board for the bottom of the box and they also cut that for me so I let my wood dry out inside the home and then I moved it outside about a week later I wanted to go ahead and get it painted and so I got my little son to help me and we got to painting and we painted and we painted and we painted <laughs> and um, of course I think this would look great if it was a stained wood a real nice wood it, you know the possibilities are endless when you design something yourself but uh, since I was reusing my white shelf I tried to work with that and also match up some of the colors of my home so this is what I came up with but anyway so my son painted the end and I painted the big spots there so we worked together on that I let it dry I flipped it over and then I painted the other side so before I started constructing my box I made sure that my wall decal that I mentioned in my original video I made sure that it fit um, as far as the height okay I didn't put it on yet I just wanted to make sure it fit and so now it's time to go ahead and assemble the boxes I think you should pre-drill your holes first so I went ahead and screwed in my deck screws I did the top and the bottom and then I went back and did the middle I made sure that this was level and on a piece of board now I want to go in 
a little bit deep because we are going to finish it out and paint it again just to make sure it's neat. There is a tool I think you can buy called a countersink um, drill bit, but I know you're not supposed to probably do it this way. I, that is not what I had, and you could go a little bit too far and ruin your wood. So be very careful when you're taking your screws and you're making them a little bit um, lower than the actual surface of the wood if you know what I'm saying. So now we're just going to fill it in with some wood putty. You can go ahead and keep it up there a little bit high because we'll just sand it off later. Like make sure it dries real well and then you can sand it down. I This is wood putty and I filled in my cracks and the screw holes and then I painted over it to keep it nice and neat. So I had my bottoms cut at the home improvement store. They did that for me. I think I bought a four by eight sheet one or two of them I can't recall and I put those on the bottom and now I have my six mil plastic you want to make sure that your boxes are waterproof okay so let's go ahead and put the plastic in here I want to make sure that it fits in there neatly before I do any more cutting and we'll just screw it in I'm using I think these were sheetrock screws whatever I had and um, I didn't really feel too comfortable that they would hold the plastic though so I put a little washer underneath it for the rest of the boxes that would help hold the plastic better and then after I did that I went ahead and put on my um, decal and there are instructions with these if that's something that you choose to do uh, I took my time I did one box each night because it's very tedious and I didn't want to mess it up and I know I would get impatient if I tried to do them all <laughs> now it's time to take some trim that I had cut at the home improvement store also it was already what's called primed and then I went ahead and just put those right there on top and then I used a countersinking tool to put the finishing nails a little bit lower than the surface area of the wood so that I could finish it off and make it look nice and neat and I didn't have video footage of that but you get the picture <laughs> so I tapped those down just a little bit deep and I'm using this called patch and paint I think this is for drywall repair but I like to use it because it dries very fast um, sometimes I think it's called spackling and so you can just use a little dab of this and put it right there on top of the nail head and it will fill in that little hole so that we can finish it and make it nice and neat. I also want to fill in the crack between the box and the trim so I'm using some caulk here and just a little tube we just need a little tiny bead so I trimmed the end off very small and we'll just go ahead and rub our finger down so it gets down into the uh, crevice there real well and I'll go back and do it one more time and I'll just smooth it down with my finger and now we can take like a wet paper towel and just wipe it off like that and make sure it's nice and clean so now my spackle has dried and I just want to um, go ahead and sand it down to make sure that it's nice and smooth so I'm not bearing down hard I'm just doing it very lightly and then I'll take a tack cloth and I want to wipe off all of that product so that when we go to paint it it'll be nice and clean and that's how you get all the dust off so that it's nice and smooth and as a afterthought I had some mylar uh, food storage bags one gallon size and I thought well that's such a good reflector of light um, I thought I would just throw a few down into the bottom of the boxes and I also took some spray adhesive that I bought at the uh, craft store and I put three on the bottom of each box too so that when the lights that were underneath the box it might reflect down now I don't know if this really helps or not or I would have included it in my original video but I wanted to let you know I also added those too so a little mylar never hurts okay so that's what I ended up with I hope that you can build and design your own box uh, using whatever supplies you have in your home I also think what would be a good idea for those of you who have young children you can always just take a little box and 
each one of your children can have a box and then over the years they could put their little handprints on it like dip them in paint so when they're really little and then show it as they grow up and then maybe it's something they'd even like to take with them one day and then they can grow food and it could be a you know generation after generation that kind of thing I don't know I just like um, things when you can design them yourself I always think that's a lot of fun so if you enjoyed the video, please let me know by giving me a big thumbs up. Also, make sure that you have hit that little bell beside the subscribe button so that you will receive all notifications for my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to share this with your friends and family. And y'all have a beautiful day.